you know how they say like curiosity killed a cat? Well, I would say like curiosity has tried to kill my GoPros for the last week and a half or so. Um, I've been doing test after test, some 40 tests at this point, purely on one thing to kill this from overheating. And of course, it's not a question of does it overheat? Yes, it can overheat in certain scenarios. The real question is how, why, when, and where does it overheat? And that's something that through this gigantic Excel spreadsheet, I've been trying to figure out, and it's actually really fascinating. For example, if I put this in a dive case, would it overheat? So I took this, I tied a rope on it, and I dropped a couple cameras to the bottom of the lake to see what would happen. Next, if I lived in like Dubai and it was 100 degrees out Fahrenheit, uh, would this camera overheat? I don't live in Dubai. So I did the next best thing. I basically hotboxed my bathroom. I put a space heater in there. I heated up to over 100 degrees. I put cameras in there. And I even had a separated piece of glass to be able to figure out whether airflow, if I had a fan on one side, would keep the camera from overheating. This has got pretty crazy. I went ahead and put them in the deep freeze, in the fridge. I've done all these sort of tests to see where that line is on overheating versus not. Uh, and it does not involve just sitting a camera on a desk and saying it overheats. It involves actually using it day to day. And I think that's the biggest thing I went back to in this entire process is that I use these cameras for a month without once overheating in real life action camera scenarios. But I've also been around the GoPro world long enough to know that everyone uses a GoPro for different things. Some people use them outdoors like myself all the time for action stuff and other people also like myself use them indoors. I routinely mount these cameras around the studio here for capturing things on indoor bike trainers or just as an extra camera. So the ability for this camera to work across all those ranges is just as important and to understand where it's going to fail is actually even more important to me. So I roughly divide up my test in two camps, going nowhere and going somewhere. Uh, in the case of going nowhere, there is no airflow. In the case of going somewhere, there is airflow. Uh, and then I had both the Hero 10 and Hero 9, two Hero 10s and two Hero... I had a lot of action cameras all the time. And thus I did what any self-respecting geek would do. I made a PowerPoint presentation for it. So we're going to start off here at 1080p and go all the way up to 5k. Uh, but there's some really cool surprises along the way. So don't be skipping ahead quite yet. Now as a general rule of thumb for my test, I would start off with indoor testing first. And if I failed that, then I'll go outdoors. If it passed the indoor test, then there was really no reason to go outdoors in most cases, because again, airflow, as you'll see, is what matters here. Uh, so in this case, at 1080p 30 indoors, battery lasted two hours and three minutes uh, at 60 frames per second, one hour, nine minutes. Battery wasn't full. Also, this is not a battery test. Uh, don't overthink the battery side of it. Uh, most of the batteries are between 94 and 100% charged, uh, but it was batteries from over the last year. So I mixed and matched Hero 9 and Hero 10 batteries. It's the same battery, but I mixed and matched ones that I've had for a year that have been like put through the ringer versus ones that were brand new. Uh, so just focus on like, why did it die? Overheating, or battery. Uh, so next to 2.7K, overheat at 60 frames per second after about 40 minutes of statically sitting there. Uh, and again, this is, I just put a camera in front of something and I let it roll until it dies. And at the end of that, it will say on the camera exactly why it dies. It'll say whether it's overheat and so the camera's too hot, or it'll say the battery's low. And you'll see that there for the split second before it shuts off. So if you have that and you're watching that, you can kind of figure it out pretty easily. We have time-lapse and time warp. Uh, now these are a little different than regular modes. In the case of time-lapse, it's just taking a bunch of photos on and on and on forever. Uh, and as you can see here from these tests, there was no failures of the overheating, zero issues with overheating. They die the natural battery causes. Uh, and then I did time warp. Time warp is all about moving Moving, by the way. So time lapse if the camera's sitting still for the most part and time warp if you're going somewhere. A lot more complicated than that but that's a general like simple version of this. In that case I filmed for an hour and 10 minutes before I got tired of riding around in circles for an hour and 10 minutes uh, and plus the camera was cool to the touch 31% battery left. At that point it had more than stabilized and there was no problems with time warp there which makes sense because I was going somewhere because it's part of what time warp is typically used for. Now one scenario I didn't cover in the time warp though is if you were to put this inside of a front dashboard and then drive somewhere for two hours uh, where that front dashboard may be in the sun or hot, you might get different results there. Okay, so from here we move into the 4K tests uh, and these are actually relatively straightforward. It'll all read, uh, but not for a while. Uh, so in the case of 4K30, for example, at a 70 degree room, it overheated at one hour on the dot, pretty much. However, things did depend on the temperature of the room, as you might expect. Uh, so for example, that 4K30 test, if I did it at a 76 degree room, a bit warmer room that day, uh, in that case, it was 48 minutes before it overheated. And then inversely, if I bumped up the frame rates to 120 frames per second at a 70 degree room, uh, then it dropped it down to 19 minutes. However, and this is where things get kind of important. Once you apply airflow, 
overheating doesn't happen anymore. So take this 120 frames per second outdoor test, uh, 29 minutes before the battery died. And that's what you're going to get battery wise. That's pretty close to the spec. I think the spec is like 31 minutes for GoPro on 4K 120 frames per second. Uh, and that's actually two different tests. This is the official test I did. I did another test uh, where I put this on top of a DJI FPV drone uh, and then flew around for a while. Uh, and it flew around the entire time that battery lasted. And then it also was still going when it went into the bushes and I had to find it for a while. So it was still recording that entire time, which was pretty much that same 30 minutes or so time frame there. So 4K 120 frames per second, as long as you're going somewhere, you're pretty much fine. So now let's talk 5.3K, right? The highest resolution, we'll talk about different frame rates within this. Uh, so in this case, I had the 5.3K at 30 frames and 60 frames per second uh, in various scenarios, mostly involving a bike where I was going somewhere. Uh, thus there was light airflow. I'm not, wasn't going very fast, by the way, 25 kilometers an hour, 18 miles per hour uh, as the max speed on this cargo bike I was on. So that was just what I was going at. Uh, but you can see battery was the cause of death of every single scenario. Uh, it was always battery and always felt cool to touch afterwards, or at least not like super hot. Uh, it was warm, but not hot. And on all these tests, it was sunny and pretty much 70 degrees out. Now, falling in the category of outdoors is underwater testing. A lot of people asked, I thought, well, this will certainly overheat if I put it into dive housing and go down underwater. No, no, it didn't. So I put uh, one Hero 10 in a dive housing and one Hero 10 not in a dive housing. And then I tied it to a rope and I went out and stand up paddle boarding out to the lake and then I dropped it down. Uh, and in this case, I didn't go like crazy deep because just as a hint, it'll actually get cooler the crazier deep you go. So it would actually just make this test even less important. Uh, but in this case, battery was the reason it died. In fact, I know this because I made a rig that would go ahead and have the Hero 9 mounted behind it like this. So I could see at the last frame why exactly it died. Uh, and in both cases, it was battery. Uh, in the case of the scuba, uh, it actually went slightly longer than the other one. But again, who knows what the exact battery state was at the beginning. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, have I hit the like button on this video? And the answer is, I hope so, because I've wasted a lot of time on these tests. Uh, and it really does help out the video and the channel if you hit that like button or hit subscribe for more crazy videos like this. Now, of course, you may also be asking, why is it that the GoPro in the scuba case didn't overheat? And I think the answer is actually relatively simple. The lake is cool, not cold, like I was swimming it without a wetsuit or anything like that the day before and the day after. Um, so it was just, you know, summer cool, if you will. Uh, and thus, it's going to act like a giant heat sink. It's going to go ahead and take that hot air inside there and cool it down to lake temperature, which is certainly far cooler than what's inside that GoPro. And it's going to do that the entire time. Uh, so even though it's not directly touching that, it is cooling that down. And it actually worked. And certainly if you're using that case, then you're probably going even deeper than I was here. Thus the water would be even cooler and then the effect would be even greater and you'd have even less problems. Okay, so let's get into the final frontier of battery craziness here. 5K, 30 and 60 frames per second indoors. Uh, in a nutshell though, if you are shooting 5K 60, the highest this camera can do, it's main reason why you might buy this camera, it's gonna overheat in a static environment in roughly about 20 minutes, give or take, depending on exactly how hot the room is, a couple minutes more if it's cooler, a couple minutes longer if it's hotter, that's roughly the gist of it. Uh, at 5K30, you're gonna to get to about an hour before it overheats, which isn't actually all that far from the battery duration claim of roughly, I think, 70 minutes or so. So not probably a huge loss there. Uh, but there's some really interesting caveats. Uh, number one, I tested what would happen if I took off uh, the battery door. Uh, and in that case, it had mostly negligible impact, just a couple extra minutes there, about 22 minutes. Uh, and then I tested what would happen if I took off the battery door, took out the battery and plugged it in to a USB power bank. And in that case, I did 5K60 all the way up to 55 minutes. Yes, 5K60, 55 minutes, no battery door, no battery, just plugged in. So then you ask, what would happen if it was cold? Uh, so no problem. Like let's say you were a butcher and you were filming a YouTube channel on inside your meat freezer or something. Uh, in that case, you can put a Hero 10 in there uh, with the battery and at 5K, 60 frames per second, again, the highest you'd ever need to go and no reason to do that inside of a, a meat locker, but whatever. Uh, then in that case, battery was the cause of death at 44 minutes. Uh, and the same for the fridge, battery was also the cause of death as well there. So that just, you know, kept it cool enough that it was no problems at all. But I hear it now, people are saying, yeah, but you didn't test like in a hot beach. And that's true. I, I don't have a hot beach to test with. Uh, so I did the next best thing. Uh, I literally made a hot beach in my bathroom. Uh, so basically I have a tiny little bathroom. Uh, so I put a space heater in there and I let it heat up to about hundred degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And then I put two GoPros on either side of a glass 
partition. Uh, and on one side, I had a dinky little stroller fan. Like it's dinky that I can just touch it and it stops. Uh, so it's not producing a ton of wind. It's just a little bit of wind, similar to what you would have outside in a hot environment, like living in Florida, or Dubai, or wherever you want. And the other side, it had no wind at all. Uh, and then I left the heater on, by the way, to make it even hotter as the test went on. And I tried to see what would happen. Uh, and at 5K, 60 frames per second, uh, the one with airflow lasted about the usual 21 minutes or so. Uh, the one without airflow fell off, unfortunately, and actually landed on its stop button. So I don't have good data on that, uh, but fine, sorry. Uh, the next test I did though, then was with the remaining battery, how long could I go 5K 30? Uh, and in that case, uh, with the airflow, it lasted 36 minutes before the battery uh, shut off. So it wasn't a temperature thing, it was a battery thing. Uh, and then the one without airflow that was sitting there uh, lasted 23 minutes and 31 seconds uh, at that hot temperature, uh, which is pretty darn crazy, by the way. So we're talking 101 degrees inside that. It is peak temperature uh, and it lasted 23 minutes and 31 seconds. And that honestly to me is pretty crazy. Like that is, it was really hot in there and this camera was still chugging along. There are not many cameras that can do that. If you've ever gone to the beach with your phone and tried to shoot a 23 minute long video, you would know that that doesn't work. Like your vent, your my phone overheats well before that happens. Uh, so that to me was kind of fascinating. Okay, now before we get to what GoPro thinks of my test and kind of the reaction to it, let's just sort of summarize this whole thing. Uh, in a nutshell, with the Hero 10, as long as you've got some airflow, even really darn hot airflow moving over this thing, you're mostly gonna be fine. Uh, now, will you be able to shoot 5K 60 forever uh, in the middle of the desert in the sun? No, probably not, but you could probably shoot 5K 30 forever uh, in the desert, in the sun, as long as you're moving. Inversely, if you were in a non-airflow environment, whether it's indoors or in a car dashboard, then at the high resolutions, simply not gonna be possible. It's it's as simple as that. And obviously I just showed you all that data. I don't wanna recap all that data, uh, but for me personally, if I'm shooting indoors, I know now on the Hero 10, I need to shoot at 30 frames per second. It's as simple as that. And if I'm shooting more than 40 minutes, then I probably should do 4K 30 and not 5K 30. If I'm under 40 minutes in one shot, then I'll just use 5K 30 and I'm just fine with that. So now you may be wondering what a GoPro would think about this. So I took this entire pile of data and I shot it over them and they said, oh, that's a lot of data. Um, and they said a lot of things actually. They said a lot of things in email back to me. Uh, you know, one of them I talked about some like the normal PR junk that you've heard in the past. It's not junk, but it's in the context of this conversation, that's not super useful. They talked about how the average clip is 70 seconds for a GoPro user and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. That's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't really solve the problem that is, you know, clearly some sort of overheating element of this at longer recording rates, which wasn't there in the past. Uh, and then they talked about how they are working on something. And while GoPro isn't quite ready to talk about exactly what they have in mind, I think you can look at what other companies have done in the past around this, and they roughly fall into two buckets. Uh, the first bucket is to go ahead and make it clear to the user the impact of certain things. Uh, to make it clear to the user that if you do these things, then this is the expected behavior. Whether that behavior still shuts off the camera, that's fine. Just make it really clear what those scenarios are. And then the second bucket is typically to give the user options uh, to continue recording, hell half the overheating potential and the potential failures there, the corruption, all that kind of stuff uh, to go forward. And sometimes in that second bucket, there are also ways that the company can look at the data they have on knowing exactly which features in the camera really do contribute the most to overheating to turn those down in exchange for longer recording times. For example, maybe it's turning off stabilization or maybe it's turning off GPS or other internal components of the camera that are just a simple tap in the menus that you wouldn't normally think to do that could actually have a pretty big thermal impact on the camera and maybe be more ideal for indoor settings where there's no airflow at all. So ultimately you just have to figure out whether or not these limitations matter to you. In my case, I very rarely shoot in 30 to 40 or even hour long chunks nonstop in a windless indoor environment. It's just not what I do. But for you, it might. That may be like your core thing and you really wanna have 5K60, in which case these cameras probably aren't for you, though there aren't any other cameras that are gonna be able to handle that either. So it's kind of you gotta balance which settings you want with what's actually available on the market today and the realities of action cameras uh, at high resolutions and high frame rates uh, and overheating. With that, if you found this video interesting, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.